listening to the Ericade Radio Network. Time for another episode of Amiga Flashback, the show that takes you back to the 80s and 90s. It's time to admit it. Tomorrow never knows. But hey, we can guess. So uh, this hour gives you the brand new music on this station for the first time. And then we talk future stuff and development. So, another station update, I guess. Monochrome Dreams. So, is the future bright or not? Depends on your expectation, I guess. I'm carefully optimistic as the station sounds better every day. Thanks to your feedback, stuff is happening. So, let's talk tracked music with or without your Amiga. But first, well, <laughs> some tracked music.
Speechless of Collapse, Bittersweet. This station started in 2005, and the music it was from the module area of my BBS. Also, it was all over the place. But it was Amiga. During the eight months we've been here since the reboot, it also been all Amiga. But that is now changing, and the reason is simply that as I begin to source stuff from the Amiga modules archive, I also source modules and tracker music written on other platforms, some of them that cannot even be played on Amiga anymore. And this is something I didn't think too much about, but more and more get uh, the feeling that, yeah, this is alright. Because we may actually be better off trying to venerate the Amiga for starting the tracker music revolution than simply saying that we strictly must play music that can be played on the Amiga itself. I think that's a fine thing, actually. So I know Impulse Tracker can have a crazy amount of channels. One of the songs you hear on this station seems to be made for 64 channels and there is no way you can get that to play on the Amiga as a tracker module or Impulse Tracker or something. I don't think it can be done at all and even so it doesn't really matter because it's Amiga in spirit more than anything else and it's great music. Let me talk a little bit about how we can pick the music to make the station sweeter. But first, <laughs> time to play some of it, I guess.
Crusoe, March of Peace. Formatting is not just what you do with your diskettes. It's very much a radio thing. As I said earlier, the music here used to be all over the place. But now it's pretty much the same kind of tunes all the time. And that's for all the better. So, okay, formatting. That is the process of making sure that a radio station is thematic. One station can be just jazz music from 1930s to 50s. Another one can be heavy metal or whatever you want. But it cannot stray away too much from its uh, signature, so to speak. You don't want the jazz station to start playing, let's say, rockabilly. It doesn't fit. Or maybe it does. You can widen the station. But if it gets too wide, it loses appeal for everyone. When we started out the Arcade Radio Network in 2005, that was the problem. I pretty much took all Amiga modules that I didn't hate and put them on. Meaning that my brother actually complained and said, Hey, the station is okay, but sometimes it just played bad music. And why is that? Because you have something you like. And when it sticks out too much, you turn it off. I have worked a lot during the months up till now to make the station sound a bit the same. It's melodious, it can be epic, it can be soft, it can be very positive and upbeat, but it doesn't stray away much. Which means that it gets better and better and if you don't like one song, or many songs here, you may not like the station at all and then maybe it's that you are simply not its intended audience. So that's where we are and we are working with this. It's gonna be so nice. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about how we can make it better and make you decide what you like or not.
Rain Buggy of Alcatraz, Sunset Blues. What's in the future? It's that big pie in the sky called the database. I intend to create a library of all the songs that allow you to rate the songs and comment on them. This will help me understanding what's working and what's not. And it also will help you to get some really crappy songs off the station if you find them. Now, one very negative vote is not a guarantee that I will remove it, but enough people complaining about the same songs kind of sends a message. But that's still in the future and I hope to be able to complete it within the coming months. And that will make the station even better, more fun and yeah, well, this new thing they call interactive. Because why not? Surreal Passage Is it possible to have more than just me as a DJ? I hope so. The license for the broadcasting software allows for other users to remotely connect to the station to voice track. 
This may mean that we can get more voices here. Voice tracking is when you record your voice in between the songs and the system happily plays them. This is what I'm doing right now, so I don't have to wait for the song to complete before I speak again. This means uh, a whole day of programming can be done in, I don't know, 45 minutes or something which is a very nice time saver and it actually is done so uh, close to broadcast that it kind of feels like it's live and that's how we're selling it so to speak but it also means that other DJs may actually enter this station but I need to find people that are interested in Amiga and Tracker music because that's what we're doing here So, is the stability back? The misadventure with the virtual machine station is finally over. We're now running on real hardware again. Will it make the station more stable? Well, it's too early to say, but the signs are promising. Okay, a bit of irony. As I was recording this voice prompt, <laughs> the connection to the network stopped working. So maybe everything isn't perfect yet, but yeah, we'll see. Today, I would say, and for the last three days or so, we have been running the whole hardware on Windows 10. And the Linux frontend with the web server and stuff is now a Hyper-V machine. This means that Streamlabs that is encoding the streams for YouTube and for Twitch is actually a capable of running against the uh, graphics card and use it to decode and uncode the thing. And this makes it all better. The virtual machine was able to reach the GPU, but it was buggy and unstable. 
So I hope things goes better. And I can already say that this new configuration actually cuts off 50 watts of power requirement. So yeah, cheaper power bills, I guess. Also, the hardware is much less busy. It's uh, 10 degrees lower temperature on the CPU core, and uh, the CPU itself runs kind of lazily around 10%, as opposed to the 40-50% that it was doing previously. So, we'll see. But of course, there are a lot of misadventures coming in this stage way I, I know this
Chaga and Goat Poisoned. Good news, more jingles are on the horizon. I intend to commission more jingles and more messages. So if you have some ideas what should be said between the songs, please send me an email to radio at arcade.net. The Arcade Radio Network, your message goes here.
Apocalypse 2030. Oh, what a cheerful song. So Sweden is slowly ramping up its corona vaccinations and the hope for demo parties where we can actually meet is slowly getting stronger. I spoke with a wrangle from Fondata here in Sweden and he wished to have it this summer in the real life that we can meet but it's yet to be seen if it's at all possible. This would end a long wander in the desert for this whole community. Here's to hoping!
us. What about more interviews? You know, I spoke with Techman this January, but since then, nothing. I hope to resume interviewing retro demo scene people in the future. If you know someone interested, well, please ask them to contact me. The email address, as per usual, is radio at arcade.net. Looking forward for more interesting interviews. BBS Alert! Digital Zone BBS is back. It used to run in the 90s, you see. And it used Swedish BBS software Nikon or Nikon. So it's a delight to have it back. I don't think I ever dialed it up back in the day. And it doesn't seem to have any content for non Swedish visitors. If you're interested, well, it can be reached by SSH or, you know, Secure Shell on the address uncurbed.no-ip.org at port 2223. If you're on Windows, newer Windows 10 actually have SSH plugged in, so to speak. Otherwise, just download Putty. It will help. And yeah, Linux is all set up to run it here and now.
Neon City. Algorithms are fun. Every video clip we have on YouTube for this station have somewhere between 5 to 40 views typically. Not much. A few days ago, a short clip with me demonstrating the station's uninterruptible power supply suddenly appeared for people clicking around on YouTube. And in three days, I kid you not, that clip alone had over 2,000 visits. Gee! <laughs> and that's a nice story. And we're ending this podcast, this show. So, yeah, thanks for listening. DJ Demon here, signing off. And remember, next episode is out in a week on Saturday at 9 p.m. And then on your podcast player. We lead you out into the night with Beats of God's Space Dream. Thank you.